Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, and welcome. We are doing a special webinar today. We usually hold one a month, but this is so important to get this message out to you because we have a deadline to meet. This is regarding the California Rebuilding Fund. And we want to welcome back today Conley, who works for Access Plus Capital, to tell us all about it. So to make sure you're getting this information on a timely basis, we're going to get started right away. Janae, I hand the reins over to you. Whenever you're ready, Janae. Thank you. I think there was a little loss in audio there. <laughs> well, hello and thank you, uh, Mr. Keys and Fresno Metro Black Chamber of Commerce for having me today to uh, discuss the California Rebuilding Fund on behalf of Access Plus Capital. Next slide, please. Now, this, this actual webinar is going to be on the California Rebuilding Fund, but I could not go without introducing our team that makes all of this happen. Today, we're going to cover, well, our team, introduce ourselves, and then also who is Access Plus Capital. If you haven't seen any of our webinars or uh, any of the presentations that we've done in conjunction with um, the Fresno Metro Black Chamber of Commerce. We'll kind of dive in to talk about who we are, what a CDFI is, what the California Rebuilding Fund is, and how can you apply for these funds? As Mr. Keys mentioned, these funds are actually going to extinct or expire as of June of this year. So we'll go into that and we'll talk about how we can get you qualified. Now, to introduce our team, we are first spearheaded by Anna Medina. She is our business director uh, of business development and business services. There's myself. I cover the Fresno County area all the way up to San Joaquin County. And then there's Ernest Ramirez. He is our business development analyst. He covers all 14 of our counties and helps out a lot with our micro lending and our nano lending programs. And then we have Jason Gridiron, who is our senior credit manager. He covers all of our counties and we just love his wealth of knowledge that he brings to the team. And then there's Pamela Monster. She is our business service manager. Then there's Victor, who is our business service specialist here in Fresno. And then we also have Buffy, who recently joined the team, who covers Kern County, and that is our team. Next slide, please. Now, our mission is we envision an economically prosperous Central California that is powered by entrepreneurs. Who is that? That's you. And we do that by supporting small businesses that create and sustain jobs in underserved communities. As I mentioned, we cover 14 counties. We go as far north as San Joaquin, as far south as Kern, as far east as Inyo and Mono, and then we go as far west as Monterey County. We provide training, business coaching, and we get the funds to our clients. That equals access plus capital. Next slide, please. Now, as I mentioned, we are a CDFI. You're like, what is a CDFI? If you haven't heard of a CDFI, we are a Community Development Financial Institution created to support economic growth and opportunity in disadvantaged communities. That's underserved communities, communities that historically have been unbanked or underbanked. We are mission driven. We assist in building wealth in underserved neighborhoods and communities. That is those business owners that are in rural areas, those that are BIPOC owned, those that are veteran owned, those that are woman owned. We are set up to provide funding for those that are underserved to get an opportunity to build generational wealth. Next slide, please.
Now we differ from traditional banks. How do we differ? Well, our primary focus is on building and expanding economic opportunity in low income communities. We provide access to financial products and services to local business owners and to the community of residents. We fund startup businesses. We also fund nonprofit businesses and we provide micro lending opportunity. We also provide, as I mentioned, that we're technical assistance and business coaching. So we are set up to ensure that we get our business owners and our community of businesses strong and sturdy with education and funding. Now, traditional banks, well, they're not required to focus a percentage of more than half to underserved communities. And generally they do not fund startup businesses or provide micro business loans. Sometimes micro business loans can be to $2,000, um, up to $50,000, and the lender would determine what their micro lending criteria would be. But that's how we partner with the banks. We are in partnership with them. They will send referrals over to us. We get our business owners up, going strong, sturdy, and eventually they outgrow us, and then they go back to big bank ready. One of the other things is different is they're less flexible. They have a lot of lending requirements sometimes and policies that do prevent them from providing certain funding. And that's where we become a partner. Next slide, please. Now, as I mentioned, if, and I believe we're going to drop this presentation in the chat room. And when we do, you can print it out. And I want you to make a, a little note, technical assistance equals business coaching as well. And we do provide that and it is tailor made to the needs of the business owner. So you're going to provide, be provided with a business coach that specifically can help you and assist you on your needs for your business. We provide pre and post loan assistance or business coaching, if you will. What that means is let's say you're a startup business and you need help with projections. That's something that we can work with um, community-based organizations like Fresno Metro Black Chamber of Commerce to help get your business plan and projections ready. Or let's say you're an established business. Now you need some support with maybe social media marketing. We're going to connect you with the experts to help you get the coaching that you need for your business. Now, something else that we provide are workshops like today. Um, we provide workshops on steps to improving your credit, business plans, understanding financials and cash flow, marketing and strategic planning, procurement, exporting, and accounting and record keeping. So as you can see, these are things that differ from traditional banking as well. We provide business coaching. Next slide, please. Now, we're going to talk about the California Rebuilding Fund. Well, what is it? The California Rebuilding Fund is a public-private partnership that is aggregated funding from private, philanthropic, and public sector sources, including a $25 million anchor commitment from iBank to address the capital and advisory needs of California small businesses as they open and recover from COVID-19. So this is a direct fund that is in response to COVID-19. It is not a PPP loan. It is not a SBA loan. It is not an idle loan. It is not a loan to grant in part or a forgivable loan. This is a completely separate program that has been set up and established for our business owners and specifically for those business owners that are in underserved communities and to help them get access to the funding that they need because of COVID-19. Now, with that, I am going to allow you to hear directly from our community of business owners and our community of uh, base organizations and leaders about the California Rebuilding Fund.
California small businesses have been disproportionately impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. In response, local nonprofits, community leaders, and local governments have joined together with the state of California to support them. Introducing the California Rebuilding Fund, an innovative public-private partnership that provides free support and services and affordable loans to small businesses as they navigate the challenges of the COVID-19 marketplace. We ask those involved with the effort what California small businesses mean to them. California small businesses are where we all come together. They represent our community and provide so many people with opportunity. Small businesses are where people take their dream and make them come true. California small businesses are the culture keepers and good job creators of our communities. Small businesses mean the lifeblood of the community. Immigrants with great ideas can build wealth for their families. Small businesses represent opportunity, a pathway to wealth creation, and the chance for our society to be inclusive. Small business is like family. Baroyman Mesle Formilo Honovadast. Mamnunam. We love small businesses because they make our community feel like home. Community, vitality, culture. Provides opportunities. And a sense of belonging. Small business creates community. To me, small business means continuing family legacy. Where family and friends meet. Small business is our passion. It's what we do 24-7, 365. Community and opportunity. A great workout, reduced stress, and more energy. Small business provides the path to the California dream. Small business is that online order that's arriving tomorrow. It's last night's dinner delivery and it's next week's haircut. To me, small business is the backbone of our country. Las pequeñas empresas son el futuro. Y queremos ayudarlas crecer. Now, wasn't that wonderful? And you heard directly from our community what impact our small business owners have on our economy. They are the backbone. You are the backbone. Now, with that, let's dive into the California Rebuilding Fund because it is coming up as an expiration ending date of June 2020. We've still got funds to deploy and get in your hands. So let's talk about how you can get qualified for this funding program. Now, first, California Rebuilding Fund. It is, um, it is a, a fund that is um, deployed or we are one of 12 CDFIs that are set up to deploy the funds to our community of business owners. Um, Access Plus Capital will be an option for you. There is a pre and there is pre and post loan advisory support to your business. I want you to also write that down next to technical assistance, next to business coach is loan advisory support, which is business coaching. Next slide, please. Now eligibility for the California Rebuilding Fund. Uh, you must be located in economically disadvantaged or historically underbanked areas of the state. So it's going to be by geocode, zip codes, census codes. Also, you must be a small business with 50 employees, full-time employees or less. 
And then your business must have reported uh, 5 million or less in gross revenues for 2019. Uh, in addition to that, you must have suffered a direct economic hardship as a result to COVID-19. And your business must return to sustained or must return to or sustain for at least one month after. And this has now changed. It's no longer 30%. It's actually 10% of pre-COVID um, revenues. So if you reflect a loss from 2019 to 2020 of at least 10%, that is something that we can look at getting you qualified for the California Rebuilding Loan Fund. In addition, you must demonstrate uh, net income or profit for 2019. And then your business must have been in operation since at least June of June 30th of 2019. So you must have been in operation since June 30th of 2019, report revenues, and then show that you had a profit and then reflect a loss due to COVID-19 for 2020. The business headquarters must be located in California. And if awarded the loan, uh, those funds must be used on the business that is located and operating in California. Next slide, please. Some of the other eligibility requirements, no active bankruptcies. That doesn't mean you could have not had a bankruptcy. That just means no active bankruptcies. And then no 30 day delinquencies in January or February of 2020. Remember, this is a direct loan that is for those impacted by COVID-19. No more than 60 day delinquency and then no charge offs, no discharge bankruptcies from March 1st of 2019 through February 29th of 2020. No repossessions or foreclosures in the last 36 months. And then no outstanding tax liens or judgments unless you are in an active payment plan. And I always say, have a conversation with me, give me a call. My information will be at the end of the presentation today and is also in the link. Um, you've been provided with a copy of today's presentation. And so you can give me a call and say, I have a question about this, Janae, and we can go over it together. Um, in addition to that, um, we want to make sure there's no outstanding uh, unpaid child support. You must be current on your child support payments. Next slide, please. OK. And then ineligible businesses. So there are a few businesses that are considered ineligible. And so those are gonna be firms engaged in activities that are prohibited by federal law. Business engaged in speculative activities that develop, from, develop profits from fluctuation in price rather than through the normal course of trade. Facilities primary use for gambling or to facilitate gambling. Businesses or firms engaged in primary lobbying activities and then passive real estate investments. So you must be an owner occupied business, meaning let's say you do have real estate and you purchase it and you are the landlord. That would mean that's more investment. But if you're a property management company, now you're managing uh, properties for um, real estate investors, then that would mean you would be qualified because you would be a business and operating. Okay, next slide, please. Now, the California Rebuilding Loan Fund maximum loan amount goes up to 100,000 or up to 100% of the business average monthly revenues for three months prior to COVID-19 in 2019 or early 2020. Now, what that means is we're gonna take your average, three month average revenues, well, we're gonna get your average revenue. We're gonna take, in this example, your profit and loss statement um, on your 2019 tax return, um, or we'll collect for each month. In this example, it's gonna be for September, October, and November. We then would add those up and divide them by three, and then multiply it by three to get your maximum loan amount of 45,000. So we would take your three months, 
uh, revenues for, in this example, again, I'm going to repeat it, September, October, November, add those up, divide them by three, and you get three months of that average, which totals to the 45000 So in this example, the maximum loan amount here would be 45000 now, there have been individuals that have had average revenues that have exceeded $100,000, and so they would get the $100,000 as um, their loan amount. Now, your interest rate for this would be 4.25. It's going to be fixed for the life of the loan. You don't have to worry about it changing or being subject to what's going on in the market. It's going to stay fixed at 4.25. And then you're going to have 60, 60 month term or five years. And then with that, you get 12 months of interest only. So you're going to have interest only payments. That's going to help support while you're opening up doors and you're ramping up or you're, you're hiring or you're getting inventory or you're buying uh, the things that you need to replenish things for, due to COVID-19. And then once the 12 months are over, you'll go into principal and interest payments. Next slide, please. Okay, now the proceeds, if you are matched with Access Plus Capital, and I'll go into that a little further in the next slides, you, um, you can use it for working capital, so cover operational expenses, uh, cover some of the rent costs, cover some of the payroll costs, or to refinance any high interest debt. So if you've got a high interest uh, loan or you've got high interest debt that's for the business, that's something that we could look at doing a refinance and you would get it at 4.25. Now also something else that's going to be included in this is a third party fee. The maximum fee is going to be $250. That's usually something we finance through the loan. And then there is a late fee that is assessed. And I always say Communication is key. So with Access Plus Capital, payments are late on the 11th day of the month. I always say, call, have a conversation. If something is going on or something was missed, always communicate. It is the greatest way for having um, a very transparent and a partnership, right? Because we are here to make sure that you are, are getting what you're needing and that if it is a hardship that we do what we can to support you as a business owner. Also, we're going to take collateral, which is a UCC on business assets. And what that is, is how we perfect our lien position on business assets. And if you don't have any, that's okay. Sometimes you don't know, but if office equipment is considered business assets as well. Um, and then there's no prepayment penalty. So let's say you got this loan and six months later, you're ready to pay it off and you say, Janae, hey, I'm ready to pay off my loan. I'll say, oh, I'm so sorry, but I'm happy at the same time. And I'm glad that we were there to be able to support you during your time of need. And that is some of the other criteria for this funding program. Next slide, please. Okay, now once, how do you apply? So now how you apply is you're gonna go out to www.calloanfund.org and you're going to be invited to, uh, to fill out a pre-application. Now, once you complete that pre-application, there is going to be an option for you to be matched. You'll be matched with one of the 12 CDFIs. Now, if you meet the criteria of Access Plus Capital, we will be one of those CDFIs that show up and you will have the option to select us. Now, I'm going to go to the next slide, then we'll return back to this slide, because I want you to see what you will see. So once you go out to calloan.org, Cal you are going to come to the California Rebuilding Fund page. Now, at this page, you'll be invited. You'll, you'll actually see all the information about the California Rebuilding Fund, but you'll also have an option to select to get started with your pre-application. You'll also be able to click below to get started with your pre-application. Now you're going to select get started with your pre-application. Next slide, please. 
and it then will take you to the pre-application. Now, some of the things you wanna make sure you have readily available, it'll have a little checklist here. You wanna have your tax returns available, maybe your business license, things like that. Because as you're going through the pre-application, it will ask you certain questions. So be sure to have those items readily available next to you so that you can go through the pre-application with ease. Next slide, please. Now, if you want to be matched with Access Plus Capital, and I would love for you to be matched with Access Plus Capital, there are some matching criteria that you would need to select. Of course, you want to make sure that these all fall in line with your business. Now, when you're looking to be matched, you're going to look at the industry. Access Plus Capital, we, uh, we do not fund uh, ag or finance companies. So that if that's something that you are involved in, that would not be uh, something that we provide funding for. And you must be a for-profit business. Um, you wanna make sure that your credit score is within the 600 or you're checking the 580 to 600 and above. Um, one year, uh, you must be in business for at least one year. We know that you've been in business for one year because you at least must have been uh, in business since June 30th of 2019. And then the size, loan size, you're going to see that come up too. You want to check anything between 5000 up to 100000 And then your uh, minimum bankruptcies, either no bankruptcies or one base bankruptcy, and it must be discharged. Use of proceeds, working capital, debt refinance, and then business type, all except nonprofit for this specific program. Access Plus Capital does fund uh, nonprofits, but not for this specific program. Now I'm gonna have you go back three slides where we can see that little list right there. Now, once you have been matched with Access Plus Capital, we get notified. I'm going to give you a call. Ernest is going to give you a call. And we're going to invite you to come and apply with Access Plus Capital. You'll get an email. The email is going to have a link you can click on and go and apply with us. And then you want to have these documents, because these documents are going to be uploaded into the application. Sometimes it doesn't work that way, and I've had um, some of our borrowers give them to me directly, send them to me in a private security email. But some of the items you're going to want to have as far as documentation are your 2019 business tax return. We only need federal, and you want to make sure all the pages are there. That's so important. You want to make sure all the pages are there, all the statements are there, and all the schedule, because it's going to make the process go along a lot for, uh, faster. Uh, also, we want your 2020 business tax returns or your year in profit and loss statement. And I would say at this point, your 2020 business tax returns. Um, we're gonna want your two most recent business bank statements, all pages. So if it says one through four, make sure one through four is all there. We're gonna have you fill out a COVID-19 questionnaire. And that COVID-19 questionnaire will be a drop down that you can download right in the application. And then we're going to want your driver's license of all business owners that are 20% or more, entity formation documents, and your lease agreement if you are leasing your space. Now, when we have a complete package, and I mean you have everything uploaded, the turn time is really quickly. We're able to get those funds out typically within a week. So that's how quickly the California Rebuilding Fund works, and it's pretty streamlined. Okay. We can forward to the next slides. There we go. Okay, well, we are wrapping up towards the end here of the California Rebuilding Loan Fund. Um, we are powered uh, in part by the SBA and we do receive SBA funds. And we are also powered in part by California Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development. And with that, we will turn it over to Mr. Keys and for any questions. And that will conclude the California Rebuilding Fund presentation.
Fantastic. Today, thank you, thank you, thank you. So I did get one question. And it was regarding the business, uh, I think it might have been the personal tax returns you're referring to. So considering the fact that we've already completed 2021, yeah. is that still the requirement of 2019 and, two, and, and 2020, not 2021? It is. And because it is in regards, it, it's specifically for those businesses that in and were impacted between 2019, I mean, from 2019 to 2020. Now, it could come back that our underwriter may say, hey, we want to see something from 2021 as well. So that is something that I will communicate, of course, if our underwriter does come back and ask for that. But it is based on those business owners that were adversely impacted during 2020. Um, and so we are still requiring the same documentation. Great. Good question. We're going to be here for another couple of minutes to answer any questions that you may have. Please feel free to post them in the chat or in the Q&A section. Regarding the entity formation documentation, what exactly do you mean by that? So it all depends on your entity structure. So for example, if you are an LLC, we're going to want to see your statement of information, your registrant um, with the state of California. We're also going to want to see um, your uh, LLC organization documentation as well. So that's an example of entity documents. We'll also want to see your business license. Now, if you're a sole proprietor, you may have a business license and a fictitious business name statement. We would want to see those two items. And you want to make sure that your documents are current. Um, you want to make sure that the business license is current. Um, you also want to make sure your fictitious business name uh, statement is current because these things are going to help things move along a lot faster if you get uh, approved and now we're getting loan documentation. So be sure to check out those things and check for the expiration dates as well. Did that answer your question, Mr. Hayes? <laughs> Yes, it did. <laughs> yeah, we're going to wrap things up here in about a minute. Okay. And then if we want to forward to the last slide, just in case anyone could not download uh, the PowerPoint presentation in the chat, if you want to take a snapshot or a screenshot, that is my contact information. As I mentioned, this uh, fund is ending in June of this year, and we do have funds to deploy, and it is very streamlined. If you are a business owner and you've been adversely impacted by COVID-19, uh, give me a call. Let's see if this is a program that you might qualify for. Okay, one more, oh, here we go. Use of loan. I know that you mentioned, uh, let me see, make sure I get this right. It was working capital and debt consolidation. Is that is that correct? Yes. For Access Plus Capital, the two um, use of loan funds we are using for the California Rebuilding Fund is for working capital and for debt refinance of high interest debt. And it must be business debt. Um, we 
we can take a look at that. It, it, it would be consolidation. Um, if you've got a 13% as, as an example, uh, interest loan and it's for the business and you're looking to get that refinance, this is 4.25. So as long as you meet the eligibility criteria, that is something that we could look at doing a debt refinance on. Wow, that's, that's quite a decrease. <laughs> yeah. Man, big drop. Ooh, I didn't know it's that steep. That, that's, oh, yes. That's pretty yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. we've, we've seen very high interest um, loans. So this is a great program for those who, who do have something like that to, to get a lower interest rate. Okay, this looks like that's all the questions we have today. And we want to thank you, Janae, once again for joining us and, and just your expertise when it comes to lending is much appreciated. We look forward to hearing from you next month in our webinar series and bringing access plus capital to the community and a membership, getting you connected. So everyone have a great day and we look forward to seeing you next month. Take care.